Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is episode number four in our GNS 530 series, the Waypoint Menu, coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started in today's episode, if you are new to the GNS 530, and this is your first time viewing any of our episodes on the series, I highly recommend for you to go down in the description. I'll have all the other episodes listed down there. Or you can click on the link up here to the playlist and start from the beginning. I also want to let everybody know that we are using the PMS 50 GNS 530 add-on, which I'll also post a link on how to get that down below in the description as well. And as always, if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps us out. So with that out of the way, let's get started in today's video. In our last episode, we went over all the different pages of the nav menu, and we are going to be able to incorporate some of that with today's lesson in the waypoint menus. So let's hop over to the waypoint menu, and the way we're going to navigate to our waypoint menu is using the lower right hand knobs of the GNS 530. The outer knob will move through the different menus and the inner knob will scroll through the pages of the different menus. One of the other things that I went ahead and did for today's episode is I already preloaded our flight plan for today. So let's take a look at that real quick just so you see what we've got going on here. On today's flight plan, we are departing BWI and arriving at JFK. We're gonna be using the Swan 3 departure and we're using the Cameron 4 arrival. So let's scroll down through here real quick and just take a look at the approach. We're also using the ILS 13 left. So now that we've gone over today's flight plan, let's get out of the flight plan menu by ticking on the flight plan button and that'll put us back to our waypoint menu. Oh, and by the way, if anybody has any questions while we're going through the video today, please post those down below in the comments and I will get right back to you. On the first page of our waypoint menu, this is gonna display our arrival airport, as well as some information about the airport, like the position, the elevation, and the types of approaches that are available here. I'm sure that the radar, airspace, and fuel boxes will become available sometime in the future once they do some updates to the add-on. To scroll to the next page of the waypoint menu, we're gonna use the inner scroll knob and just rotate that to the right. On page number two of the waypoint menu, this is going to display, I believe, the active runways that are in use at the current time for JFK. Now we also have some more information about the runway. We have the length of the runway, as well as the width of the runway, and what type of surface that the runway is made of. We can also choose other runways as well, and to do that, we can just press in on the inner knob, and then we can use the outer knob to bring that cursor over the runway selection. We can then roll on that inner knob and select any other runway that we would like to look at. Once we have that highlighted, we can then hit the enter button and it will now change to that runway. As you can see here, it will now display all the current information of the new runway that we had selected. So I think this is really gonna come in handy because we're able to take a look at the various runways that are in use and pick the best one for the size of our aircraft. Do note that if you do come in here and change the runway selection here, and you use your inner knob to go to a different page of the waypoint menu, and then go back to page number two, this will always revert back to the original runway that was displayed. So now that we have gone through page two of the waypoint menu, let's move on to page number three. On page number three, this is going to display all the different frequencies that we're gonna need for JFK. Now this is also gonna be very useful because not only is it gonna display the frequencies, but we can actually use this to populate the frequencies in our navigation or com. This way we don't have to go down and fiddle with the knob to try to get the exact frequency in here while we're flying in the air. Now to do this, all we're gonna do is to press in on the inner knob to highlight the cursor, and then we can move that cursor down once we highlight the frequency that we want to put in our standby, all we need to do at that point is just hit the enter button. And as you can see, it has populated that frequency in our COM1 standby. Now to transfer that, all we're gonna do is hit the transfer button and there we go. We are now on the approach frequency. 
The same works for any of the navigation frequencies, so let's move down here on the list. And as you'll see, it also has all the different ILS frequencies for that airport as well. This is really, really handy. So we can just highlight the one that we're going to be using for today. I think I said 13 left or 13 right. I don't know, it really doesn't matter. They're the same. You're going to highlight that with the cursor and again, hit the enter button. And as you can see, that has populated that in our nav one frequency. To get that to move over to our active, we're just going to hit the swap button right there. And we are all set to go for our frequencies. This is a really, really handy feature because when we're trying to use these knobs to punch in a frequency, it can really take a long time. This is a big time savings while we're flying. Before we can move to the next page in the waypoint menu, we have to remove the cursor off the screen. Again, we're just going to press in on the inner knob. Once that's gone, we can now use the inner knob to scroll to the next page. Page four of the waypoint menu is going to display our approach that we chose for our flight plan. Again, this is another handy feature because if we're unsure of the exact approach map, we can go to page number four and it's gonna show our entire procedure here. You also have the ability to check out any of the other approaches and this may come in handy if you wanna plan out an alternate approach because maybe ATC could route you two different ways. So to do that, it's very simple again. We're just gonna press in on the inner knob, get our cursor to populate and then we're just going to scroll down to the ILS 13 left. And then we're going to use the inner knob to then choose the other approach that we want to take a look at. So we'll choose ILS 22 left. Then we're just going to hit the enter button. And as you can see, that approach will then populate on our screen for us. It will not put this into our flight plan, but don't get that confused with the procedure button. This is only going to allow us to take a look at various approaches that we can choose. And again, once we scroll to another page and then go back to that page, it is going to always revert to the original approach that we have in our flight plan. Page number five is going to be the arrival page. This is going to show us our entire arrival procedure into JFK. So we can also do the exact same thing by taking a look at various other arrivals by tapping in on the inner knob and then scrolling down to the arrival section. We're going to use the inner knob to then scroll to the arrival we want to take a look at and then we can hit the enter button. All right, so let's move on to the next page of the waypoint menu. Page number six is going to be the departure page and this is going to give the active departures that is probably most commonly used for runway four left. And we can do the exact same thing we did in the previous two pages by going up here and choosing other various departures in which we can take a look at that we may wanna use for our flight plan. So let's move on to the next page of the waypoint menu. So on page number seven, this is gonna be the intersection page. This is gonna give us the closest waypoint to our intersection of picking up the ILS for our arrival or I should say for our approach. This is also gonna give us the longitude and latitude positions, as well as the closest or nearest VOR, the radial and the distance. The next two pages in the waypoint menu are the NDB and the VOR pages. We're not gonna go through all the different ways in which we can use these two pages today because we have not gone through all the other menus of the GNS 530. But what we are gonna do is show you a couple different ways that we can populate this information in here from the menus that we have already gone over in the series. So I think the first and simplest way to populate any information into the NDB or VOR is to use your outer scroll knob and go to the navigation menu. And then we can simply look on the map and find what we want to enter ourselves. So in this instance, we're gonna choose the EMI VOR we're going to go back to our waypoint page, scroll to the VOR section. We're going to press in on the inner knob. That'll get our cursor to populate. And now we can scroll that inner knob to enter EMI. Once you have the identifier entered correctly, it will then populate all the information about that VOR here below. We can use this information to our advantage by being able to auto populate the frequency in our NAV1 radio. To do that, we're gonna press in on the inner knob and then we can scroll down to the frequency, hit the enter button, 
and it auto-populates that in our standby for Nav1. To switch it over, hit the swap button, and we are all set to go. There's no fiddling with knobs to try to program in that correct frequency while we're in the air. But wait a minute, now you're gonna say, we had just fiddled with the knob down here to enter the identifier in for the VOR. Is there an easier way? Well, glad you asked that question, and yes, there is. Because we have already entered a VOR, let's go ahead and show you how easy it can be to enter an NDB the second way. But for the next way to populate this information, you do not have to have this on the correct page. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So I'm not gonna leave this on the NDB page, we'll just leave it right there. Now we're gonna go back to that navigation menu and we're gonna make sure we're on page two of the navigation menu. This is one of those really cool features I showed you when we went over this menu. Now, what we're gonna do is press in on the inner knob, and that's gonna bring up a cursor on our screen. Now we can use these knobs here to move that cursor around on our screen. So if we go and hover over an NDB, you're gonna see up here in the upper left-hand corner of the GPS, it's gonna display the identifier, and if we move that cursor away from the NDB, you'll see that it just goes back to map cursor. If we go back and highlight that NDB, and then just press in on the inner knob again. And now you just set it. So if we head back over to the waypoint menu and go back to the NDB page, now you can see it has automatically programmed that NDB That's awesome. into the NDB page for us. And we did not have to be on the NDB page for that to happen. So I hope that makes sense for you. On the NDB page, we are not going to be able to use this frequency to auto-populate anything like we were able to do before. So to be able to activate the NDB frequency, we're just going to come over here to the radio to the right, and then we're going to use these scroll knobs over here to enter that frequency. So we enter three. Then if we use the inner knob and start rotating it, you'll see that we're only on the ones. So we're gonna set this for one, and then you're gonna press in on this knob, and now we can adjust our tens value. Once we get 371 programmed in, then we can just come down to the frequency button, give that a tap, and it will put that in our active NDB frequency for us. Those are two different ways in which we can choose the NDB or VORs. Again, we will go over other ways in which we can do this once we get into the other menus of the GNS 530. There is one last trick that I just want to show everybody about the GNS 530, and that is the use of the clear button. No matter where you are in the menus of the GNS 530, if you press and hold the clear button, it will always revert you back to the first page of the navigation menu. It's nice. This was just brought to my attention by one of the viewers and I wanna give a big shout out, thank you for letting me know that awesome feature of the clear button. Before I let everyone go today, I just wanna go over one more thing that could possibly mess someone up if you are using the scroll feature on the Nav2 page. If you press the inner knob to get your scroll feature to populate and you start moving the cursor around on your screen, if you accidentally highlight over top of another airport and it is shown up here in the top left and you click off on the cursor, that's going to do something that you probably don't want to have happen. Because now if we go back to the waypoint menu, it's not going to change any of these because that what we had just highlighted is not an NDB or a VOR. But what it is going to change is all the airport information that is in the waypoint menu. I just wanted to let you know that and I didn't want you to get mixed up if you accidentally highlighted over an airport. So the rule of thumb here is that if you are using the scroll feature and you're scrolling around on the screen to just make sure that the map cursor says map cursor up here when you click off of the cursor. This way, when you click that cursor off by pressing in on the inner knob, it will not populate any information into your Waypoint pages. All right, so I think that's gonna wrap us up for today, everyone. If you have any questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all of my flight cyber friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.